What do you think of this matchup, Roland? Well, I like Lance. Um, I, I, I think I, I'm going to go with the, the 2020 is being pretty good here, but uh, I don't know. Uh, if, if Alan was watching the last uh, two couple, a couple matches, I think he's going to see that, you know, Archimedes' charm is, is real. It's a real threat. So it's possible that Lance is going to, you know, sneak through, but it, it might be too slow for um, the value engine that um, we're seeing Phil generate here with the blue-black control. All right, Cycling Tranquil Thicket. Chat so far cheering for Phil, though. What are you going to say, Roland? Uh, what we need to see here from Alan to actually compete is really exploration to, you know, get out ahead and also um, get that value engine going. And he has Oko's in the main, so it's possible that we're going to see that, you know, that happen to um, Blast Zone early on. Yeah. Loam here on the Tranquil Thicket. Mm -hmm. Niels, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Got the feeling that uh, Phil's probably going to sneak this one through, though, because just his deck is actually pretty well refined, and I don't think Alan has any experience playing against something like this. So that could be a factor. Yeah. Crunch I mean, crunch. I'm sure Alan has been doing his homework all night. Yep. He knows what's up. He saw um, Thomas Hep have his. Merit Lage stolen. He saw it all. And is he getting his life from the loan force of negation here? Looks like it, right? Oh uh, yeah. Oh no no wait wait no no. The life of the loan resolved. He's just he just merchant scrolled for that force of negation. I got it. I got it. Cool. Yeah. But if he does it again, then yeah, I'll get force of negation for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do it again. Yep. Looking at Alan's list, those Gorse Coders are going to be blanks. Um, same with that Tabernacle, it's not going to do anything. Christian Port, perhaps. Just like messing up the mana base. Uh, Wastelands are kind of a dud, too. But So, how, how does. Uh, go ahead. I, I'm just looking at this card now. I, I haven't seen this before. Uh, Grasping Dunes? Yeah, I don't think it's relevant in this matchup. Nah, it doesn't look like it. What were you saying? I was going to say, I feel like f this is my opinion without really digging at the list one more time. I looked at him earlier. I feel like Phil's heavily favored here. He just has so many ways to just ignore everything that, that Alan's trying to do. do you, am, I, am I wrong, chat? No. Yeah, let's hear what the chat says. I just feel like everything Alan's trying to do, he just slaps at like, like it's a, a gnat. But we'll we'll see. I think you might be right. Make a merit lazy. I'll bounce that. Uh, <laughs> you you cast an expiration, play an extra land. Yeah, I don't care. Counter it. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> what? It, he's got force of negations for the loams. He can't even do that. that I don't know. Yeah. Oko and Uro is maybe uh, the only shot here. But he has cling to dust. He can counter Oko on the way down. Here's Exploration, though. Is that Exploration? That's I Crop Rotation. So. Sorry, that's Crop oh, Rotation. Oh, Crop Rotation. Oh, that's a new art from uh, Double Masters. I'm going to tell him. Yeah. Nice Crop Rotation. Thanks. We just got him today. <laughs> nice. Uh, all right. You'll beat up. All right. Force Negation gets used here on the Crop Rotation. Oh no! Correction. That was actually on Phil's end step. That that was the that was the mix up there. So I think uh, so. Enigma Machine in chat says um, the regular game plan for Allen is, is not going to be strong here. He's got to get creative to win. Fair. Field of the Dead out of the sideboard. And, uh. Field of the Dead is pretty damn good in this matchup, that's for sure. Yeah. Especially going that many turns, just getting a ton of 2 2 zombies. Yeah. For sure. Um. Phil's only. Um. 
out to that would be the cryptic mystic sanctuary lock that he right. pulled off on uh, some previous round at one point. It was probably last week. Yeah. Um. Oh, so I didn't notice this until now, but Enigma Machine pointing out, Alan actually has Ashiok in his cyborg. <clears throat> yep. That, that'll be pretty good. Pretty good against the uh, Tasker. Mm-hmm. I wonder what he's going for here. And against the uh, Mystic Sanctuary shenanigans as well. Snapcaster, all, all shut right. off. Can't Merchant scroll with Ashiok in play. True. Seems pretty good. I think Life from the Loam is probably out of this this matchup post board. Um, seems kind of weak. Maybe. I'm not sure. Yeah. It actually seems like it could be really good. If he's able to have it stick around and not get force negationed. Well, with the Ashioks coming in likely from uh, from Phil's side, that's why. Uh, oh, maybe. Yeah, maybe, maybe. It could be that's, pretty rough. Yeah, you're right. You're right. But that's also, you know, assuming that Phil gets up to three mana easily, that can be a problem sometimes. All right, let's see what they're talking about. Loam thirteen one for crop rotation fourteen. So I should. should I, so I need to draw. Okay. Can we just make sure of chat? I don't want to miss this. You, are you guys good? What, what happened? They were just, uh, did, I, did I draw yet for this turn? I was just thinking. Oh. Uh, so, so don't know. He, sh if, if, uh, he hasn't. So, uh, so I had six four. last turn, right? So I think, it, I think it's okay because I still had six. So I still have six now, right? And all I did was. So um, you had, you, you, yeah, you started with seven. This is your turn four. So that means that you would have drawn for your second turn, your third turn, your fourth turn. So that's three cards. You cycled twice. Yeah, that's I, five I think cards. I, drew, I think I drew already. Okay, and then you had crop rotation, crop which rotation. would show you an additional card. Yeah. So that means that your uh, total cards in play should be 15. Right? No, I'm sorry. Uh, six six eight, plus nine, seven, 13. Nine, your total card should 13. be 13. Okay, so 13. We're good. Okay, so I did okay. draw. Okay. All right. Thanks, Thanks guys. There was just some confusion whether Alan drew a card for turn. Um, just a couple of things happened, so they forgot. Mm -hmm. All right. Wasteland on Underground Sea. Well, there's no second force of negation, so it's probably gonna get just forced. Wait, you didn't actually use a force of negation, right? No, not yet. Okay, so he's probably just like diving, uh, getting some more. Yeah. Getting some more blue cards. Nigma Machine making some good points. So Ashiok may be really key in this matchup for both sides. Both players have been listening to my mentorship of using Ashiok. <laughs> <laughs> I've been preaching the word of Ashiok. Ashiok Force negation. Five activations before it dies? Yep. Pretty solid. It's pretty damn good. And you never know when you'll just mill somebody out, too. Yeah. Could be a win con in some scenarios. Great thing to have against Dredge. Oh, yeah, for sure. The best with Ashiok, though, is when your opponent like needs to search and they can't search. And they need to use their graveyard and they can't use their graveyard. Like It just owns some situations right. in some situations. All right. Black is back online. Let's see, Phil could tactically resolve a tasker here and be okay. Um, yeah. I mean, if you can, if you can prevent Alan ever from getting a maze of it, right? But tasker provides a lot of value. Tasker being able to activate and uh, return something to hand is pretty damn good. So at least force negation in the yard as the only target for tasker at the moment, which is smart. Yeah, he's got to watch out for additional uh, life from the looms, giving him even more draw spells there. Yep. <clears throat> Nigma Machine trying to predict the sideboard options. It's going to be a tricky sideboarding for both players, that's for sure. This is not an easy match to sideboard for. 
because Phil's deck just has so much going on. Here's Dark Depths, though. If you're Alan, do you try to make a Marit Lage here? Maybe. <laughs> I, I think it's risky. If, if he's been watching what uh, Phil did to Tom earlier. Yeah, really. End of turn, I'll take your dude. Yeah. The. Uh, I think you have a uh, wind hitting you again. Oh, yeah. Do you? Better? I think so. Not sure. <laughs> I just heard it for a moment. Ah. Yeah, I probably wouldn't do it here. Um, and there's no Sejiri steps to, to protect it either. Phil will not let Ashiok resolve, says Jube Ninja. That could be true. Dredge in here. Yep, dredge. So I think earlier in the stream we were uh, checking out how many uh, folks that we had from around the world, right? Is uh, Tabiski from Australia? He is in Australia. All right. He says, what's up, guys? Just checking in to uh, briefly check out what's Phil's list. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I did see that. Uh, sorry, Tabitsky. What's up, Tabitsky? RDW says they need to splash black for Ashiok now. <laughs> I recommend running Ashiok. It's a good card. You can just have blue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Play only blue decks. All right, so Loam return some stuff. Peatland. Tabitsky says he likes that Phil cut fact of fiction and recoil. I like it too. I think that was a good cut. Yeah, those cards didn't seem very good. But I, I will say I was I was pretty rusty when it was uh, <laughs> trying to do another uh, fact or fiction split on camera. Oh yeah, that was just awkward. I was like, all right, so I'm gonna put one here, one there. This is like <laughs> this is not good because <laughs> I really don't know exactly what to do to give them. And I still felt like you know with fact or fiction, even if you're splitting the piles evenly, you feel really bad. Yeah. It's usually a, a, a little nicer if you could be like, all right, well, you got the Tassiger versus four cards. Like, that would be kind of nice, but um, it was not one of those easy easy splits. Yeah. I was very confused about Recoil, though. I don't know if uh, either Phil must have figured out that Archmage's Charm is better or just wanted to play uh, Recoil because of its uh, you know, bounce any... Was it permanent or a creature? It's uh, permanent, I believe. But I, I think I remember someone in chat suggested he switch to Archmage's Charm after he joined the chat. So maybe okay. uh, someone in chat inspired the change. Perhaps. Yeah, recoil what, is car, what card was that, by the way? Cards. What What's card that? did... Uh, was that Cling to Dust? Uh, yes, Cling to Dust. Okay, Cling to Dust. Okay. There is one Cling to Dust in Alan's list. Yep. I think that speaks to how versatile Cling to us is, especially with like being able to escape and then just generate the mana and escape some more. Yep. So yeah, recoil is return target permanent to his owner's hand, then the player discards a card. This could be really Maybe. good in some situations. Yeah, I think it's it's a situational card, right? So you could potentially return one of your snapcasters back into your hand. And then, you know, discard something that is that you want to bring back or flashback with Snapcaster. Yep. 
Yes, SEK, we, we did see our Archmage's Charm steal a Merit Lage earlier. That was pretty epic. I would say. So the players both have different life totals. Let me just check on that. Sure. Uh, take it report. Yep, five. So Phil's at 15 now? Uh, I'm at 15, yes. 15. Okay. You're right. Allen's at five. Sorted that out. Got a civil library on the other side. Yep. Well, Allen's like, is he at a, no, he's not that high. I guess he might have taken some beats already, so can't use that civil library to do too much damage here. No, I can't even afford to do it once, it looks like. Yeah, I think what he needs here is probably like a Glacial Chasm to kind of uh, just negate some of the stuff, but even with a Glacial Chasm out there, Phil's just going to like overvalue. Yep. Alright, right. Tassic or Trigger. Ponder, Drown in the Lock, Force of Will bunch of other crap i can't see right now are the options <laughs> i can't tell what it, i can't tell what those other cards are gonna end up getting the force of will yep there we right, go force of will yep that's one of the toughest things about playing against tasker is like is it, is it ever really correct to give them like the counter spell or is it give is it better to give them a cantrip probably not give them a cantrip right um i, I guess it depends on the situation are we gonna see alan make a merit this year the uh, block maybe. Why do you think he has not gone for the Merit Lead yet? He goes right. to one. He must suspect that Phil has Archmage's Charm. I mean, there's there's two of them that he's trying to dodge here, right? Yeah. We he doesn't seen know he has before. them, though, right? True. We, yeah, he doesn't know. This, right. uh, Ghost Alan, not do anything here. Yeah, Alan thinking about Ghost Quartering here for some reason. <laughs> oh, it's... <laughs> I don't know. You ghost quarter. Does Phil have scroll in hand? I don't think we know that. Well, All right. ghost quarter is an island. Ghost quarter gets back an island or uh, the swamp. Yep. Probably an island here. I don't think he has another swamp, so I think it's going to be an island. Oh, yeah, it's only... Uh... It's three islands in... Oh, actually, there's only three islands. Oh, okay. So the Ghost Quarter is actually good. That was, a, that was a good calculated move on Alan's part. Yeah, good job, Alan. I, for some reason, I thought there were way more islands. Yeah, I looked over. I looked at the list and I saw uh, three, four swamps. <laughs> now Wasteland, okay. Yep, sure. So now he turned off Archmage's Charm. Hmm. Clever. It's not a bad move. I like it. Cryptic with a floating mana now. Risky. Cryptic, floating mana. It's probably just to draw some cards, right? Could be trying to bounce something. Maybe. Hmm. Turn target permanent to an owner's hand. Counter target spell, tap all creatures or draw a card. So it's got to be like a probably returning like the. Huh. All right, a scoop, but I'm not sure who's scoop. Let's find out. Not sure. Hey guys, what happened there? Um, I don't think I had any outs because I already spent my land drop and I had a peat land as my mana base, so I was at one, so I couldn't use it. Gotcha. I, okay. Okay. He. he... Went after my underground sea. I floated the mana. He tried to move phases. I put my modes on draw a card, bounces by you. Oh, um, but he was at, okay. He, he was at one, and his peatland would kill him if he activated his. Uh, yeah. I get it. Person. Okay. That clever play is all around, gentlemen. Very nice. Yep. All right. So that was an interesting ending to game one. Third bingo means a giveaway. Oh, my goodness. I don't even have anything to give away. Misty uh, Rainforest. You can give some love by singing a song. 
<laughs> nope. That's not happening. All right. <laughs> I can play a song on the piano over there. <laughs> okay. Here's what it is. Mm. Third bingo. Someone in chat has to come on the stream and sing a song. Ooh. That's a pretty good one. It's like karaoke Get, gets, night. Gets to, gets to come on the stream and sing a song. Yes. Like a karaoke. <laughs> It has How's to be that? a magical song. Yeah, it has to be a song about magic. Yeah. <laughs> Roland has to dance. Yes, that's the one. Uh, you don't want to see me dance. I haven't done that <laughs> in like uh, choir days. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So sideboards here. I, I know we were talking about sideboarding quite a bit. Um, does anyone feel like either deck is better off after sideboarding? We saw obviously fill one game one. Sylvan Library for Alan. Tobitsky wants to know if Phil got scolded for main decking anti merit Lage cheese. You know what? <laughs> when, when you're predictable with your deck choice, that's what happens on the bracket, right? That's true. You got to kind of be unpredictable on this bracket, otherwise you get wrecked. Yeah, I, I, was, I lucked out uh, playing against two other Delver decks that flooded out game threes. Yeah? On Monday, so... Um, was unpredictable playing something that I've never played before on stream. And, uh, you know, under the pressure cooker, under the, the magnifying glass of 90s MTG, I mean, <laughs> I was able to pull it through, but, you know, thankfully I had, uh, you know, Jason's, Jason's guide and advice, but seriously, it like playing these decks is, is not easy trying to pick it up from scratch. It's really tough. Nope. If you're not used to it, it's tough. Nope. Uh, Ashiok. Okay, here's the Ashiok everyone correctly predicted was going to happen. Here's Force on Ashiok. Okay, so... Force of Phil, forcing. Force of Phil, cast Force of Will, and Ashiok is gone. And Archmage's Charm exiled now. So, resources may be hard to come by for Phil right now. He just missed his second land drop as well. Yeah, that's not... And so now Alan has Rishan in port. Yikes. This not going well. This could be a quick scoop, especially if, like, can't see too many more blue sources. Yeah, if Depths comes down, this is, it fills in trouble. Yeah, is that a Life from the Loam, too, in there? Or is that, what is that? Um, no, uh, no, it's Sylvan Library. Well, here's Life from the Loam. Speak of the uh, okay, okay. <laughs> All right, that's that's bad, bad news. Um, gets back the fetch and something else. I missed what the other one was. Right. Ports. Fill. Passes like the might turn. Have a, might have been a Dredge. Fun. Bayou. Trap. Uro in the yard now. Uro's in the yard, so. Uro cannot escape yet. Not yet, but Alan might be about to run away with this thing. Yeah. He has right. a port mana and Uro mana at the moment, doesn't he? Oh, man. Not yet. Not yet. Nope. But if Phil for somehow like is able to get to a second land, it's just going to get ported down as well just from that thespian stage true that's true yeah life from the loam it's crazy to see how good life from the loam is here i mean just with all those lands coming back but also just on the upkeep fueling a little bit more just for uro to uh escape Yep. Good stuff here. Yeah, Phil had the one single <laughs> Mystic Sanctuary as a second land, unfortunately. Yeah, got wasted immediately. Yeah, that's like that, that's probably one of the biggest reasons why I don't like playing that land, and I noticed that. Uh, Hans Jacob Gottick was able to take down Eternal Week in Europe last year, um, late last year, with that plan based out of the sideboard. Having a Mystic Sanctuary plus like Painful Truths, like to be able to compete with some of these Oko decks. Yeah. And uh, strangely enough, like it is, it's a great card, 
but uh, it also is pretty terrible early on in the game. Yep. Well, Uro's here. Uro is going to be there for unless they get bounced. Wow, Phil needs another land so bad. Yeah, Phil and even then he's in trouble. Get, he needs to get to black so he can like tyrant score and bring that back up to the hand or something. Yep, and that's still a bad play. <laughs> yep, discard step, discard crypto command. This is going really badly. Yeah, I would not be surprised if we saw a scoop after a couple more swings in there. Especially when you get the extra land drops every single time that Uro attacks. And there's Sylvan Library to take. Oof. Sylvan Library cycle. So now um, Loam will be mostly protected. Yep. Sylvan Library is in play now. Port. I think, yeah, discard Crypto Command. Alan's got this game too, I think. Yeah, this one's definitely in Alan. I don't think there's any way that he can get out of this. No, unfortunately. It's a life count. 17-12. Uh, 17-12, yeah. Yeah, so two more swings. One more swing. Alan drew an extra card off Sylvan Library. Yep, he can afford to if he's gaining three life every turn. <laughs> yep. Drawing extra, extra cards with uh, an activated waterlog grove. Yep. Yep, those are far on black, black water, right, um, Roland? Which ones? The Allen's lands? Allen's, uh, yeah, those are likely. It's probably Italian or French hmm. FBBs. You need to play modern. <laughs> okay, okay, cool, thank you. I, I do enjoy modern, but um, the, the whole Hogak thing got me, like, threw me off completely, so... Uh. Yep. Mr. Fringe wants to see Lone Pox with Uro. Please tweet us a list. Or send it some other way. Whatever you do, don't share it here, because I'll lose it. Elvish Reclaimer. Yep. All right, game three. Game three. Game three. We'll Jam those emotes, everybody. Game three of the finals. Here we go. Here we go. Cheer bits and jam emotes. Let's go. Yeah, anemic machine. Those were German volcanics that you saw. Nice. Not beta. <laughs> I'd like to still keep all of my organs. Yes. <laughs> Dude, I actually had uh, this is no this is not a joke. Mm -hmm. I had a nightmare the other day. Oh, well, I don't know if it's called a nightmare, but a dream the other day. I have a dream. All right. That I was doing the stream. And I was I was talking and I was I was engaging with the chat and everything, and I realized my mic was on to the players they were playing the whole time and they had to listen <laughs> to me. <laughs> Chris, fortunately, listening to your voice is therapeutic, right? So you yeah, can frame it up that way. How not, did that How did that dream end? <laughs> I just I don't know. I just woke up and that, that's what happened. But, <laughs> you woke up in a cold sweat. <laughs> yeah, but. Can you imagine trying to play a match and just have someone like talking in your ear, just like saying random, random <laughs> stuff? Yes, that's like oh, every man. day when I'm around you. It's like Chris, shut <laughs> up, Chris, <laughs> yeah. shut up. <laughs> uh, oh man! <laughs> like you know, you you're, you're trying to run through lines in your head of how to get out of a a crypto command, uh, mystic monastery lock, <laughs> and you just yep. have me telling some random story in your ear. <laughs> Honestly, though, Chris, like thinking of back, well, well, let's see, four months ago when we started doing more of this stream, um, I think we had at least one episode where it was like um, both the players and also the commentators all talking at the same time. Oh, so, like, yeah. And that that was... That was one of our first ever streams. Yeah, that was chaotic. Yeah, it was. <laughs> I feel bad for whoever was playing. Yeah, I, I 
definitely could not focus. Um, yeah. When you, I think, I just remember like having all these lines of plays, like thinking them through in my vintage deck, and I'm like, okay, I was gonna do that, but uh, the other commentator just told everybody <laughs> what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not going to do that, and I'm going to like throw this match away now because <laughs> the obvious line is now out there. Yeah, yeah. But I think that was like our first ever stream. Like we were just messing around. I think, and uh, it was just something that I didn't think about. I was like, oh yeah, why would the players want to hear what I have to say? Yeah. So you had anyway. you let me live that nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> this is ingrained in my memory now. Thank you. My bad. <laughs> it's all good. I'm glad you've come a long way. <laughs> yes, for sure. Took us All took right. us like a week to like figure out. Okay, well, obviously we we've improved a lot over the months, but it, it took us a week to figure out like okay, this is how we need to do the stream like logistically. That's fair. I mean, it, that it's also not understanding work. you know, well, understanding what the limitations were. We at least we know yeah. you know with OBS. There's only four people that can actually view this at one <laughs> point in time, and <laughs> not the entire world. So, I mean, since we've like discovered that, at least uh, you know we can at least run this a little bit smoother. Yeah. For All sure. right. We have three mountains, and that ghost quarter hit something, right? Got to the yeah. If that hit the that, swamp, that, yeah. Ghost quarters. It's a that's the difference maker here. Yeah, and now I don't know if this will be relevant or not, but. Phil's out of basics. Yeah. Phil's been fetching up basics, so that ghost court has been live. Yep. And there's only one force negation. At least at least there's a surgical to help out with uh Dang. As this is next level move here, but if Phil realized how impactful surgical was, or sorry, impactful ghost quarter was, he mm -hmm. could have brought in unmoored ego and named ghost quarter. Did I cut out? No. Oh, okay. can you hear me? Yep. Okay, cool. I, I can hear you now. All right, cool. Um, but that could have been like the dis difference maker if that were going to be the case. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, I thought I was just seeing an issue with the audio and I was checking it, but it's, it's fine. Oh, no worries. Well, there's an exploration. That's a sexy card. See auto ghost quartering here? Yeah. <sighs> okay, Alan's found his key to victory. Seems rough for Phil. Yep. I'm just trying to troubleshoot something real quick. Sure. Yeah, if we see Phil's mana base shrink out because of these ghost quarters, and if we, I think the, the main card he's really dodging here is probably going to be uh, Life from the Loam. If that, if that Life from the Loam comes down, this could spell trouble. Must be an upkeep trigger or upkeep tap an island type of thing. Actually, I'm a little surprised that uh, Alan didn't go Ghost Quarter, Thespian Stage, play the Rishnam Port, and also copy the the Ghost Quarter on the other uh, on his side, so he could double Ghost Quarter. Maybe it just didn't feel like it was impactful enough. Does he have a Ghost Quarter lock now? Basically, uh, is there life from Lum in the guard? Oh no, it is not yet. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I was, I was, I was thinking that was going to be the case potentially. Hmm. 
Well, Phil's in trouble regardless, no? I don't know. I mean, with the port, with the thespian stage, with any potential other ways to blow up lands, he might be choked out of this game because of mana denial. Mana denial doesn't... He, I think Phil could still get around this by playing a Tassiger in this spot. But the Tasker is just a 4-5 body that's just going to attack in all the time. That's not something that Alan's really worried about. Hmm. Kling? Kling targeting Uro, I guess. Huh. Okay. Safe move. I guess he could just try to... Well, he's still like two... Oh, actually, no. It's just two two land drops away from being able to cast Uro, so... It's a fair... It's a fair move. And what do we got here? Can't really see. That is a Ashok, which Ash is, yeah. seems great right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think that was what uh, mentioned earlier in the stream. Ashok was going to be the kind of the, the, the difference maker here. Sylvan Library. Okay. I think I got this working on my end. Cool. Something wasn't looking right. All right. Sure. Sylvan Library. Um, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Especially with both, the exploration out there. Tabitsky pointing out, and I, and I missed this, were both ghost quarters in the yard when they got exiled? Yeah, both, quarters, both ghost okay. quarters were in the yard. So that's, um, so that's out now. Ashiok doing some work here. Ashiok is doing some work. Cuts off all the crop rotations, too. Crop rotations, fetches are off. Two loams and a grasping dunes and a fetch just got exiled. Yes, I agree, SEK. Ashiok is undervalued in Legacy right now. It is severely undervalued. Card is damn good. I might play it in Grixis. <laughs> Merchant Scroll... You definitely, I mean, the thi like in Grixis Delver, yeah. like Ashiok might be out of reach just because it's a three drop and you're better off trying to do like Brazen Borrow or True Name stuff with yep. your three drops up or Oko if you're doing Teamer. Mm -hmm. But in a control deck or a deck that has a bunch of lands in play, like lands or depths or something, you definitely should be running Ashiok. I, I, I don't understand why everyone isn't running this card on the sideboard. Yeah, this, this card's so solid. Yep. Yes, War of the Spock, Ashiok. I don't know what it's called. But it's Ashiok. The uncommon one. 14. Dream Reveler? Render. Dream Render. It's funny. It was, uh, uh, I had a coworker who was a designer who um, apparently just gave me the heads up that, um, and this is something that I always wanted to go to, the, the Adobe conference. And it's just like, I think it's called Adobe Con or something. But it's all, it's mainly for designers out there. Yep. But the artist for Ashiok overall is, uh, is that her? I don't know if that's her. But uh, at least for one of the Ashiok uh, art, art works out there. Mm -hmm. The artist will be featured as a speaker and also um, conventions. Or, uh, this must be like a, a virtual thing, at least, but providing one of those sessions. Yeah. And I mean, I took a took a look at her uh, her gallery online. It's incredible. Like the the amount of work that they put into these uh, these art pieces is insane, and they're just all oh, yeah, coming sure. into like one little tiny box. But yeah. Uh, like to see the entire body of like what Ashok really looks like as a character. I mean, even like looking at Elvish Reclaimer, I can only imagine what is below that text box. Yeah. So it's it's nice to see that you know Wizards is respecting the art by extending the borders to allow us to really really appreciate the art in its fully uh, in its full form. Yeah. 
one of one of my least favorite things about the magic community is people shitting on art excuse my language <laughs> yeah it's just like the people who are just like yeah the new art for uh I don't, I'm just saying exploration because it's in front of us. The art is beautiful, but they'll say the new exploration art is trash. I hate it. It's just like you never touch a paintbrush in your life. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard work. You don't know what you're talking about. Uh, These people can fill like a museum with this art. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. That's so funny. Anyway, a bunch of art of, critics. You know, speaking of artists, uh, Lunil is our graphic designer for some of this stuff too. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So. He's uh, he's done an incredible job for you know more than just our own um, our own channel um, you know for some of the other legacy channels out there, just doing the backgrounds and um, some of the um, billboards or even advertisements that we've been able to put together to you know get attention for this channel. So yeah, it's really appreciate it. all of his uh, you know all of his help. I know he charges an arm and leg normally, but he was doing us a favor to uh, you know. Not charge us more than a few bucks. <laughs> so, appreciate that. Much appreciated. Yep. But he didn't create this, though. I still got this. <laughs> <laughs> I created the the graphic for this stream. Oh, yeah? The nice. photo. That photo. <laughs> Everybody's creating stuff. You're creating googly eyes. <laughs> Jason's creating banners. I'm creating pictures of weird stuff. All right, so that was just Wasteland uh, getting armor to go? Was that what that was? Yeah, I think so. Very effective card. Maybe uh, Phil was listening in last round, or last game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that unmoored ego to take out the uh, potential stuff. I mean, he, already take out the, he already took out the ghost quarters, so might as well take out the Wastelands now. But he could take out the, the Dark Depths and kind of you know, take him off of his uh, a larger win con. Uh, why did Alan just go to eleven? Oh, paying life for someone like right guy. Yeah, even paying life there. <laughs> Can't even draw a straight line with a ruler. Yep. Yeah, it's just like one of those things. I I just and I see it all the time on Twitter. Every time they release a new set or something, people are just like, I don't understand. Why they choose this crap art for? Oh, <laughs> shut up! <laughs> what? Chris, I'm guilty of that though. <laughs> oh, it's the worst. <laughs> well, you know, some of the art actually makes sense. Uh, some of the other <laughs> art is just like, all right. I mean, it, and what I've learned from you know, have being a fine arts no major, uh, you know, my <laughs> freshman year in college, I was like, these art classes I was taking, it's so subjective. So I can have my opinion as well. <laughs> this is and, true. But my professor, art professors could definitely have their opinion as well and, you know, call my color wheel a C project because, you know, it wasn't the right hue or shade. <laughs> yeah. It's also it, so many things. I don't want to go on a whole tangent right now about art. Sure, but sure. <laughs> so many things go into these art pieces. Like, the, the, they don't tell the artist, Roland, we need you to paint for a new car just make a zombie whatever whatever you think is best <laughs> you know there's so much goes into it so for much sure. it's like <laughs> insane how much work goes into each and every card we're seeing anyway. archimage's charm being stuck in hand at this point yep there is a 2020 what 2020? up guys we're here <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is Fluster something going to get on Tyrant Scorn? Tyrant Scorn? Oh, uh -oh. man. Are we nearing the ending here? Yes, we are. Wow. The Fluster gets there out of the sideboard. Yeah, I thought it was Alan, close, but... you won the match with Storm. <laughs> Storm the wins the night. We <laughs> the Everyone predicted Alan was on Storm, and they were right. <laughs> 